I'm delighted to inform the public that after more than 30 years, the Ghanaian Film Archive is to be made accessible. Around 40 hours of film were digitized in the summer of 2012. The focus is on works by Jose Bolama Kabumba, Josefina Crato, Flora Gomes, and Sana Enhada. They shot the films between 1972 and 1980 in Guinea-Bissau, during the struggle for independence and consequent post-independence nation building. Material evidence of the birth of a Ghanaian film production. In 1967, Amilcar Cabral sent these four young Ghanaians to Cuba to be trained in filmmaking at the Instituto Cubano de Arte e Industria Cinematográficos. There, they assisted Santiago Alvarez. In 1972, the four returned to Guinea-Bissau to document the independence movement. Early media activists. The archive includes a mix of raw footage, documentary films, newsreels, and sound, some sent from countries that supported the Ghanaian struggle. Chris Marker left films there in 1979. In 2012, Felipe Cesar and Nacho Cheka traveled to Bissau shortly after the April 12th coup d'etat to bring the film material to Berlin. For years, these films were stored at the National Film and Audiovisual Institute of Guinea-Bissau, founded by Mario de Andrade in 1977. The 16 millimeter film rolls in varying states of decay, are being digitized with a prototype film reader designed by engineer Reiner Meyer. For technical, economic, and diplomatic reasons, the sound should be recovered and digitized at a later date. The originals and digital copies will be returned to Bissau in late 2012. This is the House of World Cultures in Berlin. In 1957, it was a Congress Center, a gift from the United States of America to West Germany. That is Grada Colomba, the Portuguese writer. She will share her readings of particular footage from this archive. Conakry, September 1972, the Week of Information, one of Cabral's less known laboratories. Decolonization, what a beautiful word, written in images, picture by picture, a visual language portrayed in each one of these reels. Here, cinema becomes a decolonial act. In 1956, Amilcar Cabral founded the African Party for the Independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde. For 11 years, he led the armed resistance to Portuguese colonialism. This West African struggle ended in 1974 with the fall of the Portuguese dictatorship. This is the People's Palace in Conakry. In 1967, this Congress Center was partly a gift from China to the People's Revolutionary Republic of Guinea. I am speaking because the sounds belonging to these images have not arrived yet. Maybe they never will. What I speak and have to say may never be what these reels want to tell, but I tell you and I reassure you that the name Amilcar Cabral was never revealed to me in my history books, nor mentioned in my classroom in Lisbon, where other black children and I sat in the back. My memories are not sweet, though they could have been. They could have been memories of pride, if these images have been shown to me earlier before. They do not come late, they come on time. That is Amilcar Cabral. Here he performs the role of host and curator, receiving his guests, offering them tours of his event. These are historical moments, 
which history? The struggle for African independence? The political strength of tradition and modernity? Militant filmmaking in Africa? Any of those? Stokely Carmichael, the ex-minister of the Black Panther Party, and his wife, the South African singer Miriam Makiba, entered the building. André Touré, Guinea Conakry's first lady, arrives. Sekou Touré, the president of Guinea Conakry, a guest of Cabral in his own country. José Bulama, Kobumba, Josefina Crato, Flora Gomes, and Sana Nehada, the four young filmmakers who have just returned from Cuba captured the colonial act. They captured the blink of strength, looks of competence and sovereignty, mixed with joy and fulfillment. They captured the images that I would have liked to have seen as a child. Even without sound, these images tell a story. Rather many stories, but whose? The subjects, four young filmmakers, the citizens of an unstable post-revolutionary Guinea-Bissau, the world? I chose the world. Then it is also my story. Why should these images interest me? One from a distant desert. Fragments reach New Mexico via San Soleil. Not these exact images, but traces of this story. Cabral's hand gently points to a new identity, his continent given a new body, his history given a new language, his people given a new shelter, his language recovered, numbers, statistics, documents, maps, pictures, books, a whole room full of empirical evidence against those intrusive memories of subordination. The eroding film, eroding time, and eroding space. These images are so far away, but also so near. Are they memories, lost ones, or found ones? What about the children in their crisp pioneer uniforms? What happened to them? They would be my age, my contemporaries. Do they remember this moment fondly? Cabral points at the arsenal confiscated from the Portuguese army, unfolds the Portuguese flag to Madame Touré. There is no bitterness in his gestures, nor in his words. In December 1966, during the liberation struggle, he writes a letter to all the Portuguese soldiers. Nesta quadra do ano, em que as famílias comemoram a sua existência, e se renovam nos corações dos homens as esperanças de uma vida melhor, tenho o prazer de vos dirigir saudações fraternais e combativas em nome da direção do nosso partido e do nosso povo. Somos a mesma família porque enfrentamos juntos os mesmos problemas. There is something else. These are revolutionaries in the midst of revolution. Is this how a revolution imagines itself? So beautiful. The colonization was a global act, an act of humanism, where each single individual was invited to join, all gathered in the same room. Women and men, children and adults, from north and south, speaking a common virtual language. These moments captured in topographic celluloid. Four months later, Amilcar Cabral was assassinated. This raw footage almost disappeared, making us believe this has never existed. Questions? 